All right, guys, we're going to do a QA video, and this is a rather interesting one, I think, where someone's trying to create game assets in Blender and go back to an older game engine where that game engine uses a different unit and grid setup than Blender does. So they're having a hard time creating assets for that game, specifically modular pieces as well, because of the difference in the grid. And I'm going to show you how to fix that, but I just want to talk about it a little bit here first. So uh, the main thing is that when uh, we create a plane here at one meter, right? And I'm going to go ahead and just snap it in this area. Press G and hold control, snap it over there. Get an ortho views by holding alt down while orbiting. It's pretty fast. Um, the main thing is that we got a one meter plane and it's um, snapping into this one meter grid section, right? But if this had a texture on it, it was 1024 pixels. They don't match one to one. So 1024 and one, obviously, there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the numbers there. So um, if we cut a 1024 one meter plane in half and in half and in half and in half. Um, basically what's going to end up happening more or less is that uh, 1024 will cut in half to 512, then it'll cut into 256, 128, and then it'll go to um, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, and then 2, 1, right? So powers of 2. And older game engines oftentimes used powers of 2 uh, for their models and for their textures. So they were kind of in unison with each other. And the only reason I think this existed, and I'm not entirely positive about this, but let's just imagine you had a um, a monitor, right? And it only displayed 1024 by 1024 pixels, which is oftentimes what they, they had back in the day anyways, or even less perhaps. But um, if you had a square plane on your monitor and it had a 1024 resolution, you could get a pixel for every pixel of your monitor if you if you set them up that way right so they didn't use real world scales or sizes necessarily they were more concerned about screen space i think right and at, because of that reason anyways a lot of models they ended up getting modeled at similar unit setups and not physical lengths necessarily so it was a rather ingenious way of working and i think it's still a very fascinating way of working anyways but can you do that in blender and there's a little trick to this you can uh, but the grid's a little bit odd to work with, right? Because the grid itself is based off of meters, and scale of one is one meter for every one of those uh, grid squares, those big ones. But then it infinitely subdivides, potentially. Um, well, it doesn't do it infinitely, but this, it does subdivide at 10. So when we go into ortho views, you can see that subdivision taking effect. It only works in ortho views, right? So there's uh, 10 units extra in here. So one meter and 0.1 meters. And as you zoom in, they become smaller and smaller, and it's eventually it stops. It doesn't keep going, right? And you can change the scale of these if you need to, which is nice. But there's some really interesting hacky ways you can do this kind of similar modeling, basically. Uh, I used to do it a really bizarre way, but I'm not going to show you that in this one. Instead, let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to create another plane, make it one meter for now, snap it just like we had it over here before. Go to our unit setup real quick. Okay, now take note in the ortho views here. Um, subdivision is locked. Like we can't do nothing with it. The only way to get that to work is by setting the unit system to none. Right, and now we can adjust this. Because if we're trying to work on powers of two, it wouldn't work, right, with a 10. So we'd have to use something that's a power of two. It could be an eight, a, it could be an eight, a four, it could be 32, anything power of two. But we do that, boom. Now we have these subdivisions like so. So out here and there. That's going to work better for working in powers of two, right? And the way I'm going to do it, actually, I don't... Personally, I think that kind of confuses me while working with it. I'm going to set it to a one. So now we're looking at... We're not using any unit system. So we don't... Basically, one unit, one unit, one... That's all we can think of it as, basically. Um, scale is one. And so, because of that reason, if we took this plane and we wanted to change it, say we wanted to model it at like 256 by, I don't know, 32. You zoom out real quick. This is where this individual is running into other problems. All of their assets either become too small working with them, or maybe they're becoming too big. Um, in our case, this looks much, much bigger, and we get weird shading artifacts, and other things could be happening that we don't quite like. Um, so what's going on here? First thing is that the clip start and clip in, we want to change these, all right? Let's just change this one to one. One to 10 actually would work well in this case. 
Um, in the end here, you may want to increase a little bit as well. You might change that and add a zero to it, right? So that way we can actually have a little bit better of a time modeling now. Go back to item, right? Whenever you change something like this dramatically, let's say I go into edit mode and I extrude an edge. Um, if we try to bevel something like this right now, it's not going to work well because we need to make sure if we ever change numbers over here, the scale gets crazy. Control A, apply scale. We want them at ones. Um, that way our bevels work correctly, right? So now we got that out of the way. This is one unit. All of these are one units, right? We're snapping right now randomly. Let's do grid snap. Press G, hold control. Blender likes to snap to the origin point, like it places it under your cursor. I don't really like this behavior. They introduced this a few versions of Blender back. I think it's a terrible way of snapping, but um, we can, basically we can go around and we can, like I'm gonna do G, Shift Z and hold control and we can grid snap, right? And it's gonna line up and this is something like a pixel grid now. Okay. Matter of fact, the UV editor itself, believe it or not, does in fact have a pixel grid. You want to use that over there when the unwrapping and whatnot. So, but we can model just like you see in some of those old poly count forums or whatever tutorials where you set the resolutions based on the texture sizes. Not even an issue anymore. You can apply scale, do what you want. Um, I think it's too small though, right? So, this is where it gets interesting. The scale here is powers of two, and it's going to do exactly what you think it does. 128, it's going to be 128, okay? And so, we can snap to it. And it looked like it was off where we had it before. It's not off on that smaller grid, it's off on this bigger grid, okay? If you make something big, right, attach it, like, get it to the grid that you need it to be on first, and then, and then start to um, work down in size. So. Start large and then maybe work smaller. I would probably go down to like eight or something and just, just keep working there for a long time. But you can see where this, this starts to go now. Um, we can press E, hold Z, or hit Z and hold control. Um, turn wireframes on and off as needed, whatever the case. But we can actually just start getting in here and creating things now. Snapping to eight pixels, basically. Right? And if our cavity doesn't work out quite right you can adjust the size of it a little. Uh, it's still it's going to behave very badly here uh, it may not even work out that well for you at all now a lot of things in blender like to break when you start modeling in this manner because it hasn't really done a whole lot behind the scenes here we changed it to none but in reality if we look if we change it back to metric 144 256 it's still going to behave like it's that size for whatever reason when it comes to certain things. So like cavity might do that. Some camera settings and things get weird. Um, but like physics definitely gets weird. And then um, cloth as well. At least last time I tried doing this, it was. But um, that's the main thing right there is like we can, we can go crazy with this all day long. And um, let's have a lot of fun with it. And now, you know, we can model how we think we need to model anyways. And if we ever need to change the uh, scale here, we can go ahead and do that now. Now, there was an add-on that would let you create presets of scale sizes. Um, I just tried it not long ago, and it wasn't working, so maybe it'll get updated one day. So look for add-ons. There, there definitely are different types of add-ons that work well with Blender, or made in Blender for more doing things like this anyways. And uh, you might want to use those as well if uh, you can find them anyways so but yeah this is how you do pretty much modular stuff in general you notice that one there that one's rather interesting i don't know what causes that little icon to pop up where it's like you're hitting b but it it pops up i think the snapping system has gotten so much worse um, with every version of blender coming out it seems like it gets worse but Yeah, you can just start modeling things out and break them into little modular pieces later on, perhaps. I kind of like the behavior of it snapping to the cursor with the edges sometimes, but not faces or a, a big objects. So it's kind of 
one of them things, right? Like love hate relationship with that app setup right now. But you can see this does work. Not even a big deal, right? You can break it down later. You see like it's snapping randomly to the cursor but doesn't do anything else. So yeah, there's definitely bugs with it. It doesn't always work out perfectly. But I, that's Blender in general. There's always some hacky workaround in Blender for most things I'd find. You can see, um, when I hit shift tilde key and I had to use the fly mode, hit G, that turns on gravity. So you, you're about the size of a six foot man and you walk around. This system's broken now too. <laughs> that's one. It takes forever to fall. All right, cool. Um, so you might still have issues getting this into the game engine because even though we're modeling it here and it's working the way we expect it to work, for the most part, um, the issue we run into though is that when we actually export it and import it into the game engine, it might come in like a thousand times too big or too small or something, right? So there's a good odd chance, and it may happen to you, which has happened to plenty of people when working on objects, that you have to shrink these things again, point ones, apply scale, and export that, right? So you might be able to get away with modeling it this way, but not exporting it that way. So there's always, you got to take this into consideration for your workflow and uh, develop kind of your own pipeline to get back to that game engine the way you think works the most efficient or effective. Even if that means making like little scripts or add-ons to help you or something, you might have to do that. So uh, nonetheless, but yeah, that's the idea, guys. So if you run into this issue, you want to model in kind of those old-fashioned or old-school techniques there, you can do it. That's the answer right there, I think, is this will probably work out best for you anyways. So I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.